Assalamu alaikum. This is your host Rashid Madi from Islam for Mankind. Today we will be talking about the concept of original sin. A closer look. Someone might ask a question Are we born with original sin or are we born innocent? Is a newly born baby really a sinner? So Islam challenges a concept of original sin. So let us find out why. A devout Christian friend of mine actually uh, challenged me to provide some proofs regarding why Muslims don't accept the doctrine of original sin. Doctrine as we know it including the concept of Trinity That was added by the church At the Council of Nicaea some 325 years after Jesus left the earth means being resurrected Without being being crucified or anything of that nature Notice I say left the earth and not die, but that is a topic for another day so Back to our subject, the original sin. So let us look at the following passage from the Bible. And before that, I would like to state that the concept of original sin does not exist in Islam and never has. For the Christian readers, the question is not whether the concept of original sin exists in present day, but whether it existed during the period of the Christian of the original Christianity. Specifically, did Jesus teach it? Apparently not. Whoever dreamed up the concept, it certainly wasn't Jesus. For he reportedly thought. Let the children come to me and do not forbade them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19.14 So Jesus believed that the children are innocent, the children are born innocent. And right there, that's, that's the answer for, because of he said, let the children, let the little children come to me and do not forbade them. For of such is the kingdom of the heaven. So right here, uh, can clearly it's an answer to, to the question we posed in the beginning. Is a newly born baby really a sinner? And if we look further into the Bible, we find many references throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and chart out the, the, the answer to this question. If we look at Deuteronomy 24.16, it states, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Again, that was Deuteronomy 24.16. If we look at Jeremiah 31.30, it states, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. If we look at Ezekiel 18.20, the soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not, be, shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him so after reading the above verses or the verses that I just stated to you Jeremiah uh, 31 30 Deuteronomy 24 16 Matthew 19.14 Would you not agree 
that the Bible itself teaches that each one, each of us is responsible for his own actions. Now, let us ponder what the Quran has to say. We would like to do a comparative study on the subject at hand. So, if we look at the Quran, uh, 35 18, it says, And no bearer of burden shall bear another burden. And no bearer of burden shall bear another burden. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى وَإِن تَدْعُ مُثْقَلَةٌ إِلَى حِمْلِهَا لَا يُحْمَلُ مِنْهُ شَيْءٌ وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِهِ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ Sahih International 35.18 Sahih International 35.18 So, right there, we, we, we've seen in the English translation of that, a no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another, and if a heavily laden soul call another to carry some of its load, nothing of it will be carried, even if it should be close relative. You can only warn those who fear their Lord and sin and have established prayer, and whoever purifies himself only purify it himself for the benefit of his soul, and to Allah is the final destination. Also, if we look at Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 2, Surah 48, or uh, Surah 48, Ayah 2. And for a day when no soul will suffice for another soul at all, nor will intercession be accepted from it, nor will compensation be taken from it, nor will be, be aided. So, in comparing the, the, the Qur'an verses that I just stated with the previous uh, biblical uh, text that I just quoted as well, we see, so it seems that the Bible and the Qur'an are in total agreement on this topic. And as we go along further on this journey of truth-seeking, we see this happen more often than not when we study them with open mind so now let us uh, listen to some scholars uh, on this subject and we shall continue <laughs> check this out Well, we're back, and you're watching The Mailbag here on The Dean Show on Yusuf Festus. We were talking about original sin. The original sin, as far as we know in Islam, is when the devil refused to obey because of his arrogance. And he said, I'm better than Adam, created from a better substance, that he was created from a smokeless fire, whereas Adam is created from mud. So that's the beginning of the original sin. But now where does it go? Now, in Judaism and Christianity, you'll find in what remains of the Bible today, in the English language, something that they refer to as original sin, and they're talking about the sin of Adam. What happened was that in the paradise where Adam was residing, along with his wife Eve, they were ordered by Allah to enjoy and take part of anything that they wanted except for one tree. Don't eat the fruit of this specific tree in the paradise. And it was the devil, according to the story that we have in Islam as well, that came to them and got them to partake of this. Now, according to the Bible, it was the devil talking to the woman, and then she did it, and then she got the husband to do the same thing. According to Islam, the devil went to both of them, and they both did it. So there's no blame in Islam on Eve over Adam. They're both guilty, they both did it, and there's not any special punishment for her versus him. They were both guilty, and all of them, including the devil, were put down out of the paradise under the earth to begin their lives because this was always intended 
by Allah from the beginning. He always intended for them to come to the earth and he already knew what was going to happen. This is a test. That's the belief in Islam. And now let's understand something about the original sin. According to Islam, how does this work? Well, if you said that all of the children are going to inherit this sin because of what the parents did, according to Islam, this is not logical. Allah says in the Quran that he doesn't task any soul for more than they can bear, nor does he put the burden of one onto another. That's not in the way in Islam. Allah says in the Quran, La yukallifu lahu nafsin illa wusaha, laha ma kasabat, wa aleha ma kasabat. So we understand right away that each and every person will be responsible for what they do. And Allah says that in the Quran too, that on the day of judgment, even somebody did a small weight of good, they'll see it then. And whoever did a small weight of evil, they'll see it then. So how about this idea that a child is born into sin? Islam refuses this notion altogether and categorically denies that that's even possible. Because the old saying which says, innocent as a newborn babe, may have originated in Islam itself. Because it was the Prophet Muhammad who said that every child is born in the natural fitter of all Islam. Every child is born innocent. Islam is to be innocent and sincere and submissive and totally at peace with Almighty Allah. Absolutely. Every, uh, every uh, person is born, every child is born innocent, every human being is born innocent. And we, if we go back to what uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, said that uh, you know let the children come to me for that the the, the, the heavens it's uh, you know they are of the heavens meanings that they are innocent so we, we we've seen that uh, you know that concept let the children uh, in Matthew in Matthew 19 14 let the children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of the heaven, meaning that the, that the children are innocent. It's like it's like a blank paper, you know. I mean, the uh, in matter of fact, from an Islamic perspective, uh, the children will not account for their action until they reach the puberty, until they know right from wrong, and, and that's the mercy of Allah. You know, uh, you know the writing of the uh, the recording of the of the deeds start when a person reach the age of knowing, reach the age of puberty, and he should know that he is free of his own action and that he's uh, the responsibility and the burden of that. And that's out of mercy that uh, that we seen that. So we shall continue, inshallah, with uh, Sheikh Yusuf Estes uh, to listen to the Yusuf is just talking about the Christianity and talking about the original sin, and we shall uh, discuss it. And this is the condition of a baby. And this is the condition of what? The true Muslim should be the same way. And this is what was told to us by Muhammad. And it's not different from the teaching of Jesus. If you really look to Scripture, if you look to Scripture, what they have today anyway, it says that Jesus told them, suffer the children to come unto me, which means allow. It didn't mean force them, punish them or whatever. It meant allow the children to come. Because they were driving the children back. It was crowded. And they said, ah, no room for kids. But no, he said, let them come to me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, confirms this by saying that when a child dies, they go to heaven. And regardless of the religion of the parents. Regardless of the religion of the parents. Let's go back and revisit this statement again. He said that every child is born on the fitra, the natural inclination of Islam to submit to God, but it's the parents who raise them up to become a Christian or a Jew or a fire worshiper. But Islam is showing us when a child dies, regardless of the religion of the parents, the child is going to paradise. And the child will be in paradise calling, Oh God, please let my parents come be with me. Let my parents be with me. This is the teaching of Islam. Original sin? I think we better relook really at that one again. Let's go back to Dean Show and see what's happening over there, and we'll be right here. Uh, that was a show from the Dean Show, and that was Yusuf, Sheikh Yusuf, is this talking about the original sin. Now we go uh, to to uh, listen to another uh, 
uh, Joshua or Yusha Evans uh, and uh, inshallah he will be talking about the original sin from an Islamic perspective. He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever living, he is the first Bismillahirrahmanirrahim I am Yusha Evans, a former Christian youth minister Born and raised in the United States Converted to Islam in 1998 After an intense study of the Bible Led me to see not only the inconsistencies and contradictions of the text, but of the message itself. And through further study of trying to find the truth about God and his nature and what he wanted from human beings, I finally was led to the beautiful religion of Islam in the year 1988, uh, almost 12 years ago. <clears throat> Are we born with original sin or original purity? What is the Islamic perspective on this and why? The Islamic perspective on the creation is that the creation is born originally pure. That every single human being was born of a pure nature. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that every child is born on what is known as fitra, meaning that a natural disposition of an inclination towards their creator. They're born of a pure disposition of creation. And that it is only their parents who can make... can through their upbringing, lead them away from that natural disposition or nurture that natural disposition and put them on a path to worshiping their creator for the rest of their lives. Now, as a former Christian, I know that this is not the Christian concept and that I know for sure the Christian concept actually hangs and revolves upon this principle, that it was Adam, peace be upon him, who, when he had his fall from grace because of he ate of the tree, uh, that God had told him was off limits to him, that it was because of this uh, uh, sin, which they refer to it as, that originally he fell from, from God's grace, and that this fall from grace then was inherited through his progeny to the rest of creation, and that because of this inherent sin nature, we would always be short of falling, uh, falling short of the glory of God and the grace of God. This is the reason why um, people baptize their children is they want to free them of this original sin nature thinking that this baptism is, is, is washing away that original sin nature that existed in the creation of human beings and that the final answer to this was the coming of Jesus Christ as the unblemished sacrifice to sacrifice himself for the original sin nature of humanity and the sins of humanity as a whole and therefore open the door again for people to come back to that natural disposition of grace and uh, through Jesus Christ. Now, this is a principle that is not taught in the Bible, unfortunately. And this is just the case. And for those of you who will go and study, you will see that this is the case yourself. <clears throat> Beginning very early in the Bible, this is the case. Now, we as Muslims do believe that Adam did eat from the tree which he was told not to eat from. And that this was indeed a mistake. Um that this was a mistake that, that, that Adam made, and that this was what began his living in paradise to his fall from paradise to live in a life as a normal human being here on this earth. But we also know that, and we understand, that through God's attribute of being the all-knowing, that he knows everything, he already knew that Adam was going to eat from this tree before he ever told him not to do so. And that everything that God does is part of a divine plan. Um, this not a, excluding uh, that this was part of God's divine plan. And we know that Adam repented of this sin. Adam repented of this mistake that he thought from himself was, was indeed a grave sin, uh, which he himself said to God that if you do not forgive me, uh, that I will be one of the losers. So he did repent to God sincerely, both him and Eve, uh, and God did forgive them, and God did pardon them. And so therefore, something that is forgiven by God, first and foremost, is not going to be inherited by the rest of human beings. Secondly, in the book of Ezekiel, we will find a principle that 
God lays out in his law. And in the book of Ezekiel, God says that to each man is his own burden. That the son cannot bear the burdens of the father. And the father cannot bear the burdens of the son. That to each man is his righteousness upon him. And to each man or woman is their wickedness upon them. Meaning, the basic fundamental principle of the, of the Bible is that no one can bear the sin of another. I cannot be responsible for your sin. You cannot be responsible for my sin. And the righteousness that I do is my righteousness. And the wickedness that I do is my wickedness. And it is between me and my Creator. And He is the one who is going to punish me for it, my wickedness first and foremost, and He will reward me for my goodness. Therefore, when I commit a sin against Him, I therefore need to turn to Him and ask Him forgiveness for that very sin. But that my original beginnings are with purity, and that when I seek to return to my Creator and ask Him for forgiveness, I continue to make strivings toward that purity once again. Uh, but we do know that we are all inherently uh, uh, sinful, meaning that we were created with a free will. Therefore, we were in a, a will inherently make mistakes. Every human being will make mistakes. Every single human being will do wrong. Uh, but at the same time, God knew this when he made the creation. So to say that, we, that Adam made a mistake, therefore all human beings are guilty of the mistake, and that this is a big problem that had to be solved through the coming of Jesus Christ, is almost in a sense, to say that God did not know what he was doing when he created creation. He did not know what was going to happen when he gave human beings a free will. He did not know that they were already going to commit wrongs and commit evils, and he had not already set up a path before he ever created creation uh, for them to come back to him, and that he had to wait all the way until the coming of Jesus Christ to decide how and when to forgive human beings for their sins. This is not befitting the majesty of the Creator. He knew before creating creation that we were going to be sinful, that we were going to commit mistakes. So he already laid out a path for us uh, to resolve our issues and resolve our mistakes. And, as, and that is by following in the footsteps of our father Adam, peace be upon him. And this is the, one of the biggest lessons that we learned from this incident, is that when you make a mistake that is against God, then the natural order of things that you should do is you should return to that same God. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to to pardon you and let him know of the sincereness of your soul, of the remorse that you feel for doing those sins. And it is that act alone that allows God to forgive us because it is God who created us. It is God who is going to call us to die. It is so that's, that's very, uh, that's very uh, valid uh, point uh, that, that, that you brought up and very interesting thing. So when you make a mistake, or you trying to, you don't have to go and confess to nobody. You, you invoke your creator. You supplicate to your creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who created you directly. You go to him directly and beg for forgiveness. And Allah is very forgiving. And he loves the people who return to him and asking for forgiveness. So also, just to touch on that, we uh, I'd like to, to state more biblical uh, more biblical now now that he that planted and he that watered are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor everyone shall receive his reward according to his own labor this is actually what I'm reading right now it's from the Bible yes absolutely from the Bible and this to show uh, 1 Corinthians 3 8 to show that every single soul is responsible for his own self every human being is responsible for his own self be it he or she so this idea that someone died for your sin does not make sense when you when you look at it that when you think about it why would someone die for you what, what does it do to you you make the mistake and you expect someone else to pay for it is that fair? How judge is that? You know what I mean? And also to, to clarify that we are uh, the question that you were posed in the beginning are, are the children are born with sin or are we born with sin? Uh, to clarify th uh, 
that so uh, we, we, we give the example that uh, Jesus you know uh, do do you still want me to prove that your children are born without sin so read Matthew nineteen fourteen, which state but Jesus said suffer little children and forbid them not to come into me for of such is the kingdom of heaven means uh, here uh, here in this context suffer I mean just uh, let them let them come to me don't 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 stop them you know what I mean let them come to me and forbid them not to come into me for of such is the kingdom of the heaven meaning that children or human being and every one of us is born free of sin because when Adam make that mistake of eating from the forbidden tree, Adam and Eve for that matter, so they, they ask for forgiveness and they were forgiven. And Allah teach him a word of repentance and they were repented. So the matter is already resolved right there. Yes, they commit a sin. And yes, they ask for forgiveness and they were forgiven. So right there, the, the, the idea of original sin does not exist right there because uh, we, we, we can call it uh, original forgiveness because they were forgiven and because of that mistake of the because of the first uh, uh, you know disobedience of Adam to his creator then they were taken out of uh, the Garden of Eden and put in the earth for a period of time as a test for humanity and that's what we are here now as a test and we are in this place as a testing place and we we, we, we are to to do good to be you know to uh, to continue with with goodness and everything so we shall continue inshallah so to seek forgiveness one does not have to go to nobody to confess your sin or anything of that nature to seek forgiveness one must sincerely repent directly to the one from whom uh, forgiveness emanates, which is Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We said that Adam and Eve were responsible for their own sin, so they both repented and they both were forgiven by Allah. So therefore there is no need for anyone to die for anyone. And I will further say that you can never establish justice by injustice meaning killing an innocent man for the sins of other is the ultimate injustice would you not agree someone commit a sign how dare could we go to someone else and expect them to pay for that uh, for that crime it doesn't make any sense even in the court of, of the human law let alone the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we say as far as the sin of Adam goes, the Quran tells us that he repented for his sin and God, Allah, revealed to him words with which to repent and which he then accepted from him. Uh, this can be found in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 37 or ayah 37. Then Adam received word of forgiveness from his Lord and he accepted his repentance. Verily, he is the one who repeatedly accepts repentance, the most merciful. So, we said, since there is no original sin, therefore there is no need for anyone to die for anyone for that matter and I would just like since we, we, we were speaking of this for those who claim that Jesus died for our sin uh, or uh, we I'd like to to read or, 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 or touch on the Quran how it challenges concept in the Quran uh, Surah 3 uh, verse 54 it says and they plotted to kill Jesus and God planned too, and God is the best of planners. That means they were trying to kill Jesus, indeed they were trying to kill him. But Allah saved him, and, and Jesus supplicated to God, and God accepted his 
supplication and save him and the likeness of Jesus was put on somebody else so somebody else was killed uh, you know by mistake or whatever the case might be but definitely not Jesus Jesus was resurrected and definitely he will come back another time to fulfill his message and also to die a natural course after he finished his, his, his second return and this second return are sign of the last hour as well so before the last hour established definitely Jesus uh, son of Mary uh, my peace and blessing be upon him will return to 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 do his task and to to kill the 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 false Messiah or the Dajjal the Antichrist also the Quran 4 uh, chapter 4 verse 157 to 158 and because of their boasting we kill the Messiah Jesus the son of Mary the messenger of God but they kill him not nor crucify him but the resemblance of Jesus was put over another man and those who they further in are full of doubts they have no certain knowledge they follow nothing but conjunction for surely they kill him not but God raised him up into himself and, and God is ever all powerful all wise so we would like to listen to some verses that talks about the concept of Jesus my peace and blessing be upon him in the Quran So we're going to listen to the concept of Jesus in the Quran. We're going to talk about the miracle birth in Shabna. In Qalatil Malaikatu Ya Maryamu Inna Allah Yubashiruki Bi Kalimatim Minhu Smuhu Al-Masihu Isa Ibn Maryam Wajihah وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين ويكلم الناس في المهد وكهلا ومن الصالحين قالت رب أنا يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون When Allah decided to decree a matter, he just said to it, be and it is. So that was just, uh, we listened to Quranic recitation. Uh, I would highly recommend uh, our readers or our viewers to, to go to Quran chapter 19 and read the Surah Maryam. It's a beautifully and eloquently illustrate the whole story from A to Z of the story of, of Jesus. And it talks about his mother in, in detail. It talks about his, all his family. And it, it lays down the whole concept of Jesus peace be upon him, the son of Mary, and how it's come, uh, how it come about and, and everything. So it's very, it's very uh, uh, lengthy and it's very uh, powerful, uh, you know, verses that, that illustrate everything. So and uh, we go back to our discussion. It's uh, the origin sin. We said that everyone is responsible for his own deeds and no one will save the other as Allah revealed in the Quran 82 verse 17 to 19 and what will explain to thee what the day of judgment is again what will explain to thee what the day of judgment is it will be the day when no soul shall have power to do out for another for the command that they will be holy with Allah that means every single person is responsible for his own uh, self so uh, so therefore you know this concept of 
original sin uh, really does not make sense. We, 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 we said that it is actually a origin of forgiveness or, or you know I mean because when Adam make a mistake he asked he supplicates and Allah accepted his supplication so therefore there is no need for anyone to die for anyone for that matter so also we 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 would like to touch on the oneness of Allah that Jesus is reported to say in Matthew 4 verse 10 worship the Lord your God and serve and serve him only worship your Lord and serve him only also uh, if we look at Mark 12 29 see here or Israel the Lord our God the Lord our God is one law so here you go Jesus peace be upon him stating that there is only one God and commanding his follower to worship only one God so how dare could we say that he is the son of God or is a part of the Trinity it doesn't make any sense and as I say in the in the in the beginning it was not part of the original Christianity it was add on some 300 or, or, or 350 years after the Council of Nicaea that you know with the influence of the Romans and the influence of other influences and people they were not uh, eyewitnesses or you know after the fact you know uh, just think about an incident that happened in front of you uh, an accident that happened and you call the police and they show up 300 or 400 years after the the accident happened and just trying to gather information how how disastrous it's going to be how the reporting is going to be how fair is that going to be so that was the case you know that's why you see some of that but out of mercy of Allah still the message or the essence of the message is still preserved so when we look at it you still can see it right there that despite all the addition or despite all the editing or despite all that that was done to the Bible it still you can find the truth of the oneness of Allah and that's a miracle in itself still exists to this day in the Bible as we know it and that we, we, we stated Mark 12 29 as an example here O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and in Matthew 4 10 worship the Lord your God and serve him only and I would like to uh, to read what the, in the, uh, the English uh, of course the, the what the Quran has to say there is only one God there is no God save Allah also he is the creator of everything before starting the creation God was alone eternity is strictly God's he is the first and the last he is the supreme ruler of the universe God is unique and dissimilar to anything he does not resemble anything there is nothing like him he is subtle and out of reach of anyone's senses vision cannot grasp him but he grasps all vision and he is the subtle one the aware one uh, say he is Allah the one and only Allah the eternal absolute he begot not nor nor is he begotten and there is none like into him that means he did not give birth to anyone and no one gave birth to him so therefore he doesn't have a son so that is Allah you know the concept of Allah so uh, we gonna conclude here as we demonstrated from the Bible that absolutely there is no original sin but there is original forgiveness and we are born sinless free of sin and it's up to you to 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 shape your life and uh, to repent to your creator and uh, to another episode and thank you for tuning with us to islam for mankind assalamu alaikum